Welcome to the latest video and in this video short well what we're excited to announce is the publication of the Six Sigma Black Belt Handbook 400 pages of golden advice on how to become a world-class black belt and earn double your normal engineer salary because that's what being a world-class problem solver is all about. This is a how-to book. It's not a statistics book. So you are be going to become a brilliant engineer. If you buy this book, you are going to become a brilliant black belt. Go to lulu.com and look for the Six Sigma Black Belt Handbook by Paul Allen right now. Welcome. To the latest video and in this video newsletter what we're going to talk about is can there be too much CPK too high a CPK so let's put on the board there so what we're really talking about too high CPK now can it be too high in other words can it be too expensive is really what the question was about. So somebody left a comment on one of my videos and rather than try and answer through the comment, sometimes it's easier to, to make a video uh, and make a point that everybody can see and understand. So let's have a talk about whether your CPK can be too high. Now the first thing we have to understand is that the process performance is completely independent of the tolerance. In other words, this, you have a process. Let's think about the physics of your process. Your process, of course, is trying to make money. You have a series of inputs. Keep it simple, I'll just put four. And of course you have an output, possibly a couple of outputs. Okay, so, obviously the result here on the output side is what the customer is interested in. They're interested in your process hitting some kind of result and possibly being in some kind of tolerance but your process doesn't know the tolerance and can never know the tolerance. All your process knows is this. You are going to put various amounts of variability through those inputs, this way through the system. These will combine together to produce that that's the physics of what goes on. That's all the process can know. The inputs get transformed into an output. Now then, the customer comes along and says, I need a, a specific tolerance. Well, obviously, it's not usually the customer necessarily. It's often the designer who design, decides the tolerance. And the reason they decide the tolerance is hopefully that tolerance will please the customer. But this will remain the same. So if the designer came along and said, that's what I want, the red distribution will be the result. But if the designer came along and said, that's what I want, the same red distribution will be the result. The, the process doesn't know the tolerance. You can walk up to your machine, you can give it a good talking to, but it won't make any difference. The process responds to inputs only. So now then the question is, if you've got this, because obviously this would be, let's have a look, this is probably, this is probably a CPK equal to two potentially. So maybe 
your, your inputs are too expensive? Now, it's a perfectly valid question. And the, and the question is simple. If you decide that you don't want to be as good as this and that your customer would be perfectly happy with something, let's say closer to that, what would that be? Um, let's say a CPK equal to 133. And that there's some money over here, materials, maintenance routines, um, spare parts costs, maybe you're buying original spare parts and you could buy cheaper spare parts. If there's some money over here that will relax that distribution down, then of course you have the choice of saving money. And in this case, maybe your CPK is too high, it's costing you money. But how about if there isn't, you're not spending fortunes over here. You, you are at the cheapest that you wanna be. And you still get a CPK of two. Is the CPK too high? Not really, no. Um, and they do say, of course, that the, the more you reduce variability, the cheaper the process becomes. So let's assume you've got a process that looks like this. This is a, a CPK now of, I'm gonna call it about 2.7. So if you wanted to consider this for Sigma, what would that be? Um, it's, about, it's about an 8.1 Sigma process. Now the experts say, the more you reduce variability, the cheaper, the cheaper the process will be. Now that's a theory, you have to go and prove that, but that's what they say. So what would drop out of this? Think about it. If this was your process result, first of all, setting up the machine, how many samples could you take to set the machine up? Well, probably, a sample of one is all you need to be able to set this up. Because if you land somewhere here, what do you know? You know you're miles away from the tolerance, no risk of making defects, run the machine. You can take more measurements later and if you want to center it better later, knock yourselves out. But how hard do I have to work to understand the machine and understand the res risks of defects, one sample will probably do the trick. So if I'm there, I'm good to go, set the machine running. Okay, once the machine is running, how much notice do you have to take of the machine? How many samples do you have to take? How, many, how hard do you have to work? Well, once you understand whether this thing sits or whether it, it will have a tendency to wander with batches of material, and of course, how far it might wander, there's a good chance you might say, you know what, once I've set it up and I've got it centered, you know what, I'm not gonna take any quality measurements whatsoever. I'll run the batch of a thousand straight off, straight to the customer. How much cheaper is that to run? So there's benefits to having brilliant CPK. There's lots of benefits, but you have to go and work them out for yourself. So when you go, is CPK too hard? Too high rather. Work it out for yourself. Decide what it's costing you. Decide how much better or worse you wanna be. Um, Decide what your competition's up to. Maybe your competition are far in excess of the capability that you're using. In which case, you're gonna have to get, you're gonna have to get much better than the way you currently are. There are lots of good reasons why your capability should be better. And it isn't just about where those blue lines have been set. But a key point is the blue lines won't make the process behave. You've made decisions over here, which were all about money. If you create this, this is unacceptable because what are you gonna do? 
you're going to grade the tails away. And now if you try to plan a hundred pieces to arrive this end, how much material have I got to launch through this to try and get up to secure a hundred pieces? Lack of capability does cost you a fortune. There is no excuse for saving money to achieve that. Definitely not. That is inexcusable. No business should be run like that. But is your CPK too high? Ultimately, when you get really good, you can decide where the money is, what can be saved, what can be eased down upon, where the customers are, and that kind of thing. But this, definitely, this will cost you more money than any saving over this end. So get your CPK above one. If you happen to accidentally get brilliant CPK, because that's what your process does, if there's money to be saved, go save it. But what you don't want to ever do, don't ever save money and piss your customer off because that is the road to hell. That is the road to closing your company down. Please your customer, get a CPK that's appropriate, and then you'll make more money.